want to get this right. Good evening. The regular meeting of the Valpar City Council is called to order on Monday, October 28, 2019 at 7 p.m. Uh, we are reconvening from the closed session, uh, but since it was posted as closed session, but there was no item discussed, uh, there was no agenda for the closed session. So formality-wise, we are coming back from closed session. Uh, roll call, please. Councilmember Hamada. Here. Councilmember Coops. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Garza. Council Member Dutton. Here. Mayor Santanas. Here. Is there a motion to, to excuse the absence of Mayor Pro Tem Juan Garza? So moved. Second. Motion by Council Member Hamada, seconded by Council Member Coops to excuse the absence of Mayor Pro Tem Juan Garza. Without objection, that will be the order. Uh, tonight's invocation will be led by Council Member Dan Coops, and the Pledge of Allegiance will be led by the Assistant City Manager and Director of Public Works, Mr. Len Gorecki. Please rise. Please bow with me for a word of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening to give you thanks for all our blessings. We uh, truly appreciate the fact that Bellflower has uh, received your blessings over the years and hopefully will continue to do so. Be with us as we deliberate those items before us. Give us the wisdom to do what's right for our city. We want to especially be mindful of our people in the streets that take care of our fire and our public safety needs, be with them throughout their evening and throughout the week and throughout the month. Also, we want to give thanks to our armed forces throughout the world to keep our United States safe from all our enemies. In his name we pray, amen. 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 Please address the flag, put your right hand over your heart and repeat after me. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of, the of the United States, States of America. Of America. And, and to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under, God, under God, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilmember Coops, and thank you, Director Gorecki. Uh, announcements from for tonight. Uh, let me start off. Join the Bellflower City Council and the City of Bellflower in celebrating the grand reopening of the Bellflower Aquatic Center with, with a ribbon cutting and tour. Uh, this is a project that's been going on for quite some time, and uh, I took a look at the aquatic center today. It is quite impressive, something that our city can be proud of. This event will be taking place tomorrow, Tuesday, October 29 at 2 p.m. at Thompson Park Aquatic Center. For more information, please call 562-804-1424, extension 2264. Council Member Dan Coops. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Belfire Symphony Orchestra Association will be hosting their fall concert this Saturday, November the 2nd, at the William and Jane Bristol Civic Auditorium at 7 p.m. Admission is free for Belfire residents. Individual concert tickets are available $12 for adults, $10 for students, and for seniors. For more ticket information, please call 562-867-4871. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Coops. Council Member Raymond Hamada. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The holidays are fast approaching, and the Belfar Volunteer Center is accepting donations of canned foods and dry goods for their, fam- for their Thanksgiving food drive. 
the, the donations will go towards Bellflower families in need. Please make all donations by November 7th. For, for more information, please contact the Bellflower Volunteer Center at 562-804-1424 and the big extension 2331. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Hamada. Council Member Ray Dunn. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Mark your calendars because this year's Christmas tree lighting, which will be held on Friday, December 6th at 6.30 p.m. here at downtown at our Friendship Square, located at Bellflower Boulevard and Belmont Streets. Join us for free fun for the entire family. Enjoy a visit with Santa Claus, snow sledding, holiday crafts, carolers, and much more. For more information, please call 562-804-1424, extension 2261. And yes, I did say snow. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Uh, tonight, we're very honored to have several presentations. Uh, first, we're going to have a proclamation declaring October as the Breast Cancer M Awareness Month. And to receive that proclamation, we have uh, Nancy Gutzmer from the American Cancer Society and Carol Miller from the Tri-Cities Relay. Following that, we'll have the proclamation declaring October 23rd to 31, 2019 <coughs> as Red Ribbon Week. And I'm um, assuming we have Jocelyn Cisneros receiving that uh, proclamation. And also, we'll have... Um, uh, recognition of the winners of the Student Art Festival held on October 12 at the Town Center Plaza. We have Santiago de la Isla, third grader from St. Dominic Savio, Anabella Arcega, fourth grader from St. Dominic Savio, Ruby Gonzalez, fifth grader from Ramona Elementary School, and Aiden Kwan, sixth grader from Valley Christian Elementary School. And finally, um, it's unusual for us to receive a presentation so we'll have a uh, Mr. Um, uh, Joseph um, Torres from the Los Angeles County Economic Development Corporation giving recognition to the city of Bellflower. So, so we'll start off with the Breast Cancer Awareness Month followed by Red Ribbon Week and then uh, the Student Art Festival. So I'll invite the, my fellow council members to the riser. So we'll start with the uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have two um, great ladies um, from the American Cancer Society and also from the Tri-Cities uh, Relay. And I just want to kind of recognize your um, involvement in this um, cause, uh, especially the, uh, the Relay for Life. It's something that uh, the city looks forward to, is sponsoring and being part of. And um, part of this uh, proclamation is the, um, the Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And let me just give you a uh, kind of a uh, uh, a few lines from this proclamation. I will not read the whole thing because it will take me um, forever. Take a I know, I'm going to take a chance. But um, one thing that's really important to, to mention is whereas when breast cancer is detected early and is in localized stage, the five year survival rate for women is 99%. So that's very critical. And of all this, uh, where I says in the proclamation, that thing, that line to me hits the, the hardest, I think, because that's really true. And it kind of um, tells us to make sure that women should be tested early. And so don't wait for things to happen to you. So the earlier it's detected, the better the cure is happening. So with that, I, I would like to, um, now therefore it's resolved that I, Sunny R. Santa Ines, Mayor of City of Belfour, do hereby proclaim the month of October 2019 as Breast Cancer Awareness Month and ask all Bellflower citizens to join this worthwhile cause to celebrate the successes and memorialize these lost battles. Uh, signed, Mayor Sunny R. Santa Ines, Mayor Plotin Juan Garza, Council Member Ray Dunn, Council Member Raymond Hamada, and Council Member Dan Coops. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, to go along with that, Relay for Life first started in 2008 in Bellflower and um, eventually merged in 2017 with Paramount. And then uh, in 18, we brought on uh, Norwalk 
because uh, cancer doesn't have any boundaries. So uh, merging the events together allowed us to put more money into the, the mission, which is to save lives. And uh, with those three city events combined, we have raised almost $2 million wow. since we all started relaying uh, and then together. So we look forward to our new event. It's a Western theme on June 20th at uh, Bellflower High School and um, or a location uh, to be decided. We, we haven't uh, gotten 100% um, yes on the uh, high school, but uh, June 20th. And this year we will do a 12 hour walk as opposed to the traditional 24 hours. So thank you so much. Now I'd like to invite uh, Jocelyn Cisneros. Oh. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you so much. You missed last last meeting. I I was wearing red red tie, <laughs> but we since today pink. it's pink because of the uh, Breast we Cancer Awareness it. Month. So <laughs> anyway, so it's a proclamation of Red Ribbon Week. Uh, now, therefore, Sunny R. Santa Inez, Mayor of City of Belfort, do hereby proclaim October twenty-one to. 225 2019 as the Red Ribbon Week and urge all citizens to protect our community from the dangers of drugs. It's very clear that um, drug education should start early and I'm glad that our school district is doing that. They're on the forefront of uh, drug education. So with that, uh, thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you so okay. much, we appreciate it. We just wanted to say thank you to the beautiful city of Bellflower. We appreciate you putting our students first, and we thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here tonight. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Okay. So you got the uh, Karen Connections, right? Yes. Here we go. All right. All right, now we invite first the, the winner of the uh, Student Art Festival on, for third grade. I'd like to invite um, Santiago de la Isla and his parents are here, right? Come on up here. So this is for you. Tell me about your, um, your art. So what did you draw? I drew a giraffe, and my mom helped me, helped me remember how to draw it. And after I, got, after I got really better at it, so I didn't even need help on it. OK, wonderful. Just, just for information, the, uh, the subject matter for the third grader is uh, animals. Uh, the fourth grader is garden. And the fifth grader is outer space, and the sixth grader is the Bellflower community. And uh, it was a, uh, an art competition that done on the spot at the Town Center Plaza. So they did the project on their own. Uh, I think third and fourth graders have 45 minutes, and then the fifth and sixth graders have one hour. And the parents, I assured you, did not help you during the contest, okay? <laughs> because what we did is we have, we have a demonstration by local artists to, to kind of the, um, divert the parents from coaching their kids. So they were out there uh, also learning something about art. So congratulations. Okay, you can be uh, proud of your accomplishment. Okay, all right. For, for giving me the opportunity to, to, to be here and tell you what my art is about. Very good. So if we, were, if we were to do it again next year, you're going to participate again? Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Next, I'd like, we'd like to invite uh, the winner of the fourth grade level uh, from St. Dominic Savio, Ana Vela Arciga, and her parents.
I'm glad you brought your trophy. Wow. All right. Very good. Yes, sure. Souvenir. Okay. All right. Very we good. We also have grandparents here who oh. are very supportive. Come on, bring come them on up, up here. Well? Yeah, bring them up. up. Bring them up. The whole family. That's why we space by, uh, by grade levels. We know the parents and grandparents will be here. Okay. Annabella, tell us about your project. My project was very unique. Uh -huh. I loved clay modeling, so I thought, what if I go and do clay for my project? Oh, okay. Did you have fun? Uh-huh. Okay. And thank you for giving me this trophy. And I had a great time at the art competition, creating, I mean, competing against great people. Very good. All right, congratulations. All right, thank you again. Congratulations. All right, very good. Uh, next up, we, we'd like to invite um, Ruby Gonzalez from Ramon Elementary School, the winner of the fifth grade, uh, fifth grade level. And also the teacher, uh, Mr. Ellis, and also oh, the, the principal, Dr. Reyes. Please come up here. Congratulations. Okay. Okay, Ruby, can you tell us about your art? So I drew like a space girl and then I made her eyes closed to look like she was thinking about space. And I practiced a lot to get it perfect. Uh, okay. Do you know that Council Member Coops went to Ramona Elementary School? Really? Okay, so you can be a... Oh, no, no I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not going there. So you can be a council member in the future. Okay, very good. So did you have fun at the competition? Yes, I had a lot of fun. Okay. If we were to do it next year, will you participate again? Okay. You will, participate. You will participate. Yes, I will participate. Okay, very good. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. For sixth graders, I'd like to invite Aiden Kwan and his parents and the teacher, Mr. Smith, from Calvary ba Valley Christian. From Valley Christian. <laughs> uh, sixth graders. Um, you drew about something about Bellflower, right? Okay. Talk about what you drew. Uh, I drew um, a picture of a fire truck and um, a logo for CERT, which, is, which stands for Community Emergency Response Team. I also drew a picture of, um, part of, a, of Pirate Park, which is a, a park in Bellflower, and I also drew the actual um, Bellflower. Good. So how much time did you practice this art? Uh, I probably practiced, I practiced a lot, yeah. How many hours, roughly? Uh, probably, maybe, I would say, roughly, maybe four hours. Four hours? Oh, wow. wow. With four hours of practice, you did well. All right, congratulations again, all right? All right, congratulations, and thank you.
All right, thank you again to all who participated in this competition. And I also want to thank the, uh, the teachers, the principals, the parents uh, for helping the, uh, helping the kids. And also I'd like to a special shout out to uh, Ms. Max Perrin uh, for promoting this uh, competition to the Belfort Unified School. Thank you so much. And by the way, just final thought on this, the, uh, their winning art are on display on the second floor, right? So look at the display case before you leave and uh, you'll be proud of your, uh, your, uh, your, uh, your child's work. All right, thank you so much. Now we're gonna turn the table around. We'll have a presentation from the Los Angeles County Economic Development Corporation. I think we'll stay here. Yes, yes, this time the winners will be on the other side of the stage. So, honorable mayor and members of the city council, a valued guests, and all the winners in this room as well. My name is Joseph Torres with the Los Angeles County Economic Development Corporation. On behalf of the LADC, it is our pleasure to honor the city of Bellflower as a 2019 Most Business Friendly City finalist for the third time in the last five years. Before I get into the, de well, it takes teamwork and big picture thinking on economic growth to be a most business friendly city finalist. With a commitment to being a business friendly city, the cornerstone of Bellflower success has been the ability of the city's elected officials, leadership and staff to work together and focus consistently on fiscal stability to enhance the business and commercial health of the community to build the city's business and job base, and to coordinate with regional economic development partners to bring vitality to the community. Bellflower is a city marked by diversity, where independent spirits thrive, where working and living are made easy, and dynamic backdrops unleash imagination and creativity. And what's distinctive about its diversity is that it is built around shared community, identity, values, beliefs, and passion. We all hear how hard it is to do business in California, but Bellflower is different. Bellflower is business friendly and fosters a business climate where companies can grow, prosper, and thrive. When doing business with the city of Bellflower, businesses have access to direct communication, professional engagement, responsive departments, and the willingness to help businesses succeed. In 2006, LADC created the Most Business Friendly City Award after hearing from site selectors all over the world that Los Angeles County was not business friendly. The Most Business Friendly City Award was created to challenge cities on, among other things, three important initiatives. Number one, to create an environment conducive for business retention and expansion. Number two, to attract and retain good quality jobs. Number three, to encourage new business investment. As California's only business friendly city award, the program recognizes cities like Bellflower that are committed to providing high quality services at reasonable rates, deliver services beyond expectation, and make economic development a top priority. <clears throat> the city of Bellflower has indeed placed a high priority on economic development to meet the growing economic needs of the community by attracting new businesses and facilitating the expansion of existing businesses through its various business-friendly programs. The winner of this pre prestigious award will be announced at the LADC's Eddy Awards on Thursday, November 7. The Eddy Awards have, been, have become one of the most prestigious award programs in California. Attended by 600 of the region's leaders to recognize exceptional economic development leadership in business and government, in Los Angeles County. Bellflower is in good company along with other large city finalists, which are Rosemead, Gardena, Norwalk, Pasadena, and Lancaster. This year's small city finalists include Duarte, the city of La Mirada, Monrovia, San Gabriel, and Santa Fe Springs. Again, on behalf of the LADC, it is our pleasure to honor the city of Bellflower as a 2019 Most Business Friendly City finalist and to recognize your leadership, commitment to business friendly, 
excellent programs, job and business creation, and our economic development partnership. We applaud your efforts and encourage you to continue developing and evolving your business-friendly services and to get the word out to your local business community, brokers, site selectors, and media so they are aware of all your city has to offer. Congratulations again, and we look forward to seeing you, your city council members, and leaders at the Eddie Awards on November 7, hopefully in the winner's circle. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Torres, uh, listening to the narrative that you just spoke about, if I'm one of the judges, I'll give it to Bellflower. Absolutely, <laughs> and you deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> Ray reminded me that third time is a charm. See, this is our third time, so <laughs> we're hoping that we're going to make it this time. All right, moving along. Um, public comments, Mr. Stewart. This is the time set aside for the public to address the City Council on matters not listed on the agenda. Anyone wishing to address the City Council should come to the podium and be recognized by the Mayor and state your name for the record. If you wish to address the City Council on an agenda item, you may do so by approaching the podium as we review that particular item. You will be given a reasonable amount of time to address the City Council. Uh, is there anyone here who would like to speak on a non-agenda item? Please come forward. Uh, please sign in and state your name for the record. Uh, good evening, Mayor and members of the Council. I'm Josh Murray, and I'm here on behalf of Clifton and Brackenseek Library, 9945 Flower Street. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to let you know that um, this past Saturday, the 26th, we had a wonderful event in partnership with the Public Health Department where we provided 125 flu shot immunizations to members of the community. Mm -hmm. And this was our um, largest flu shot immunization to date. Um, I'd also like to invite... At, at no charge. No charge. It's All free. 100% right. free. Um, I'd also like to invite members of the community to our Nightmare Before Halloween, a pre-celebration bash on Wednesday, October 30th, 2019 from 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. Before you go off and venture into the night, join us at the library for a pre-celebration bash. Our bash includes delicious goodies, story time for little ones, games, and learning about Halloween with some trivia. And this is designed for all ages, but um, best suited for ages two and above. Thank you. All right, thank you. It's always good to see you, good to see you Josh. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. With that, moving along. Um, Sir Stewart, item 11A. This is a public hearing, consideration of possible action, conduct a public hearing to discuss to consider adopting resolution number 19-83, a resolution authorizing the city manager, city attorney with Elizabeth Duran and Yvonne Vega to provide loan funds for building facade improvements at Victory Home Medical Supplies at 16823 Bellflower Boulevard per the Economic Development Business Assistance Plan, Chapter 3. And we have Ms. Jun to make the presentation to you.
Hi, Catherine. All right, you're on. Sorry, some minor technical difficulties. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Stewart. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council. The item before you tonight is a loan application to Chapter 3 of the Business Assistance Program, which helps small businesses finance facade improvements to attract customers and promote local economic development. The loan application was submitted by Yvonne Vega and Elizabeth Derone, owners of Victory Home Medical Supplies, which sells mobility products, hospital beds, and other home medical equipment. Victory has been in business since 1946, and in 2017, Victory moved from its initial location in, on 9751 Artesia Boulevard to 16823 Bellflower Boulevard in downtown. This downtown location currently uses a banner and a blade sign to identify itself. However, it requires additional facade improvements to better market the business and help customers find this new location. The owners are requesting a not to exceed loan of $33,000 for facade improvements, which includes new paint, channel lit signage, and neon lighting around the blade sign. The loan requires a match from both the business and property owners, which they are both prepared to do, and sufficient funds for the city's loan are budgeted in the Economic Development Department. The loan is provided at 0% interest and will be fully forgiven in five years, provided that the owners do not default on the loan agreement and remain in business. The applicants are also aware that the improvements are subject to prevailing wage. The owners anticipate completing the proposed improvements this fiscal year. Staff has reviewed the loan application, which includes a business plan, financial records, and a commitment to promote the city in their marketing efforts. Staff has determined that their application qualifies for this loan and that the proposed improvements are eligible under the plan. Staff recommends City Council open the public hearing, take documentary and testimonial evidence, and after considering the evidence, adopt resolution number 19-83, or alternatively discuss and take other action related to this item. This concludes my report. Both staff and the applicants, uh, Elizabeth Derone and Yvonne Vega, are available to answer any questions. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, just for the information of our audience, um, the city has set aside some funds for the business assistance program, and it's been going on for how many years now? Um, I believe since 2017. 2017. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the purpose of this um, assistance is to give help to our business in the, in the city. And I think the, the, the last one who took advantage of this was Fantasy Cakes. Um, at least in regards to this program, uh, um, Chapter 3 for Facade Improvements, yes, it was yes. Fa uh, Fantasy Cakes. Fantasy Cakes, and it's been very successful. I think they're very pleased. Uh, and also the community is very pleased with the improvement in the facade. Um, so how much money do we have in the budget for this year for the business assistance program? For this year, we have $125,000. Okay, and the maximum is $33,000? Uh, it varies depending on the program, but for this one, yes, it would be 30000 $30, plus okay. 3000 for architectural drawings. I see, okay. And when you say that the, um, the, um, it's a forgivable loan, basically, uh, over five years, is it amortized over five years, or is it basically written off after five years? It is amortized, technically, and if they happen to default, they would pay the remaining amount within that five-year period. Mm -hmm. um, but after the five-year period, it is forgiven in full. Uh -huh. Okay, so just in case, for example, here, if they were to sell the, the, uh, the business after two years, they have to pay the, uh, the balance for the three years yes. remaining. Okay, yes. very good. All right, thank you. Any question for Ms. Ms. June? No. I have a question. Council Member Coops. Is it a different situation if they were to do interior improvements? So we do have um, two other programs. So one would be this one, Chapter 3, for facade improvements, um, particularly improvements facing the main street. We have another one that has a higher cap, but it could also be used towards the interior and exterior improvements. Is this exclusive only to Belfar Boulevard, or can any merchant on any street apply? For this chapter specifically, it's not exclusive to downtown businesses. Um, there is a lower cap for businesses outside of the downtown mm -hmm. area, but anyone citywide can take advantage of it. Does it make a difference whether or not the property is owned by the uh, applicant or if it's a rented property? Um, not necessarily. So Victory was able to take advantage of both the owner-owned and the business-owned 
I'm sorry, the property owned and the business owned component. Um, because the pro property owner was able to come up with a match for their portion, we were able to increase their loan from what would have been just twenty thousand for the business owner to thirty thousand because the the business the property owner was also involved. So what is the property owner's participation in this project? It would be thirty four percent of that ten thousand dollar bump. So just thirty four hundred dollars? Sorry. So it would be it would be thirty four percent of $15,000 because their maximum that they can receive is $10,000, which is two thirds of 100%, and their remainder is 34%, which would be about $5,000. And they were able to contribute that match. So they do that initially um, to f take care of the initial expenses that the contractor will incur when, so when he is paid at the conclusion of the project. So there are you have an escrow that you put all this money into and because it sounds like you got a lot of commingling of monies or funds. It's on a reimbursement basis and so the um, property owner and the business owner can submit their charge their invoices and we would pay them 66 percent of that invoice as long as they can show proof that they've paid the remaining 34 percent. And it has to be done at prevailing wage. It does have to be at prevailing wage. Have they identified someone to do the work? They have. Because that was a challenge for the bakery project. Absolutely. But we've overcome that. Do we have someone that is uh, interested in doing prevailing wage at a lower cap? Uh, they were actually able to work with the contractor who did the Fantasy Cakes project. Oh, so he's so that initiated made it a bit now. Easier, yes. All right, save his <laughs> number. It's <laughs> 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 got the experience then. <laughs> That's all I have. Thank okay. you. All right, thank you, Mr. Coops. Yeah, uh, Councilmember uh, Hamada. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ms. Catherine, uh, you had said this is the second project this year? For chapter, oh, the first project Related, for this yes. fiscal year. Yeah. The second for the chapter three program oh, yeah, the, for facade yeah, program. improvements. All right. And it's a total of 125K in, in that budget. In that budget. Item. That budget so does allow yeah. for um, other programs, other uses, but we primarily do use that budget for this program. It goes fast. Uh, no. Not uh, that fast? Not always. All right. Very fast. All Depends. Right. Just, so it's, 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 it's a first come, first serve? It is a first come, first serve. All right. That was sort of like an announcement to the public there. Right. And so. typically we've only been able to about to do about one a year, All right. one every two years um, because of that prevailing wage challenge. Um, but we also have been able to qualify applicants for the Chapter 1 program, which mm -hmm. is the conditional use permit um, to waive the fees for those yeah. who are looking for an, uh, an ABC license. All right. Okay, thank you. All right, thank yes, you thank so you much. Mr. Mayor. All right, um, is there a motion to open the public hearing? Move to open the public hearing, Mayor. Second. A motion by Council Member Dutton, seconded by Council Member Hamada to open the public hearing. Anyone who'd like to speak on this item? Not the applicant. I'm sorry, uh, we called, uh, I was late, um, bus was long. Um, I, this thing about being, uh, we're late for public comment, is that right? Yes. Well, I'm sorry, uh, I'm late, I'm not perfect. So could you please forgive me? I do need to speak for the homeless. Uh, we, we, we'll we, we'll yeah, finish this item at the very- Please. We'll, please. we'll finish this item so that we can conclude this and then we'll, we'll reopen the public, uh, public comments. We lost another individual two days ago. Can, can you explain? He died. I understand. I understand. I just want you to know it's in your city. Uh, we are on item 11, so let's finish item 11 first, and then we'll give you the opportunity please, after that. Please. Okay? All right. Uh, can we hear from the applicants? Hello. I'm Yvonne Vega, and this is my partner. Elizabeth Duran, um, we're the new owners of Victory Home Rental. Any, any question? For, oh, for oh. you. Oh, okay. Cool. Are, I got a question. <laughs> <laughs> are, sure. you, are you excited to get excited for the new look? Yes, yes. I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Me well, too. <laughs> thank you. We, we um, want to thank the city for the, this opportunity and this program that you guys have uh, mm -hmm. to offer and um, because of all the business um, meetings that you guys mm -hmm. do, the mingle, 
and we were able to see that you guys have this program to offer. So thank you. Randy. All right, thank you. Oh, oh, can, you bring up, can you bring back the conceptual design? Mm -hmm. Is that, what color is that in the, in the background? Um, it is like, like a, a cr cranberry uh, yes. blue? brick color. Uh, right now it's like a maroon. Uh, yeah. color. Okay. Is that a different uh, color? We the, hope yeah. to bring a new color like white and then the lettering in red. That was something that was. Oh, so, so not this. This still is still design. No, it's not, it's not oh, red. I see. Yeah, okay. we're still under design. Yes. They okay. need the money to design it. It okay. <laughs> <laughs> and are you going to be using the same architect as the uh, fantasy cakes? Yes. Okay. So they should know what they're doing because yes. they passed through this already. <laughs> so, okay, very good. Any question of the applicant? Yes, I do. Go ahead. Is there a So a, do you a, like your new location? Yeah, we love Working out for you without getting too personal, yeah, whatnot. So it's, you're making it work? Yes. yes. It's, it's, we are. It's, it's I miss my old paint store there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of customers say it was a uh, Jackson paint, and yeah. we found a lot of cool old stuff from yeah. the paint store. So. Been there for years and years and decades. <laughs> that was their yeah. choice, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, no, I wish you well. Glad you stayed in Bellflower, and you didn't Thank move you. too far away. So Appreciate really. Appreciate it. Hope to grow with you guys. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. So how's the business compared to the old location? It's a little slower. Uh -huh. But um, I think with uh, us going ahead and showing with other, well, I go to doctor's office and just make sure that they know that we, we moved and um, just doing a little exploring here and there. Mm -hmm. So you're do doing a different kind of marketing to the doctors. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the people that yeah. they think that we're still closed because that's what my feedback, letting us know. No. So I, going to doctor's office kind of helped a lot. So when do you want this to be completed? By the end of this year. <laughs> By the end of this yeah. year? I hope so. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. You, all, happen, you, all, really you have about so. just yes. over two months. Yeah. Okay. You'll right. make it happen though, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Any question? Uh, uh, no, just, just a comment. Thank you for staying in Bellflower. And, and again, yeah. again, best wishes. And uh, hope, you know, again, uh, yeah, brighten it up. Uh, make, it, make it visible. Uh, bring in the business. Thank you. Okay. I, Oops, go ahead. Do you know the history of that building at all? <laughs> I'm the town historian, so I would like to tell you. <laughs> um, that I'm aware of from customers, it was um, a paint store. Uh, right. But first it was a car paint store, and then it became a paint Originally, yeah. Jackson Paint was on the corner in that little place where the glass shop was. Oh, wow. And then he expanded into your building. But prior to that, <laughs> that building was built about 1953. And it was called a Pep Boys. It was an auto parts place. And that's why you have in the back that enclosure where you could drive your car in there and get your tires changed and mufflers changed. That was the back end there. That's why it's set up that way. Thank oh. you. So it was a car place initially. So you buy your parts in the front and then go around the back and put them on for you. And as far as victory goes, that was started by a guy named Hi Bubar. Yes. And he was so excited after World War II that he called himself Victory Drug. Right. And he's right. that on the corner of that. And he later uh, was a partner in Woodruff Gables Hospital, which is now the Olive Crest building on Woodruff. But he was a mainstay here in Belfar for many, many years. And his claim to fame is he owned almost every corner in the city of Belfar. He bought from the Victory Drug proceeds. Wow. All right, so there's nice your history, history lesson. There's a history on Victory Drug and the history on Pet Boys being there. <laughs> <laughs> So that can be your model in buying more properties in Belfast. Of course, there's no one to audit me because no one's a, as old as I am to tell you if it's a lie or not. So. <laughs> thank you. Okay. All right, thank you so much for coming. You're welcome. All right, there's a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Uh, second. Motion by Council Member Coop, seconded by Council Member Hamada to close the public hearing. Without objection, that will be the order. All right, gentlemen. So I'll uh, read here. We're going to. Okay. Uh, oh, we got some. Uh, we, uh, we were going to conclude oh, this first. Not yet. We're, we're not, not, we're not done yet. Oh, you didn't call me? No, oh, not yet. Sorry. All right. <clears throat> uh, we're going to do a. We we'll do it at the end. Adopting resolution oh, number. It happened. 19-83, uh, a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute loan agreement file number 850 in a form approved by the city attorney with Elizabeth, Elizabeth Duran and Yvonne Vega to provide loan funds for building facade improvements at Victory Home Medical Supplies, which is located at 16823 Belfire Boulevard per the Economic Development Business Assistance Plan, chapter number three. 
Second. Uh, motion by Council Member Coop, seconded by Council Member Hamada for the City Council Bellflower to adopt Resolution 19-83. Roll call, please. Council Member Hamada? Aye. Council Member Coops? Aye. Council Member Dutton? Aye. Mayor Santanez? Aye. All right, congratulations. <laughs> now you can start the project. All right, thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Hardesty? We're going to go back to public comments. It's an honor to be here again. I'm sorry for uh, my lateness. Um, I want to get back into where the statistic is with the shelter that you settled out with Santa Ana. Right? You're going to stick with that idea? Or we're out here cold. So if you're going to stick with that idea, Santa Ana didn't have a shelter when they first started their encampment. Remember that? Uh, the staff is still working on the on the logistics. Okay, okay, so in the newspapers, in television, each of those clients that were homeless were put into a motel for 30 days until they figured out what they were going to do. So if you settled out with them, we're entitled to 30 days into a motel voucher. Same agreement. Chill. You're not the mayor. You don't have to do anything. Just listen. Because it's fair treatment. Uh, talk it's to me. Fair. Mr. Harris, talk to me, okay? I'm only, I'm trying to. Okay. Okay, the same rules apply from there to here. You asked me a question? That is not in the settlement agreement. What? It is not. The motel is not in the settlement agreement. Well, we need to be out of the cold. They got there. It is not. It is not. Okay. The one, the, the agreement we signed with the judge is a shelter. There's no temporary stop gap motel in the meantime. Okay? Right? Because that's we our agreement. We lost one. Two that's, days our, ago. that's our agreement. If you haven't read the agreement, read it. It's a public document. Read the agreement. Okay? I'm hoping that you don't put the shelter there because so the homeowners in Bellflower will not get upset and we can help our own. You know what I mean with, with my proposal last week, <clears throat> but I'm assuming that this is what we're doing, sticking with that. No, we're not. I hope not. Thank you. No, we're not. All right. You know what? Thank you. Okay. Thank please, you. Please, please, and, and, and I hope God directs you and and, and, and just listen to it. the truth. The truth will. We need your help, Mayor. We need you. That's why we're doing something about it. Okay, we're doing something about it. We are the first city in LA County who signed the settlement agreement. That's a big oh, thing. What okay? am I supposed to tell them? Uh, you know, hey. Tell them wait and wait until the shelter is ready. How long is that? Uh, we are. No, let's just be. We are, our agreement, and Randy's going to give you a copy of the settlement agreement that we have with them, the consent decree. And our our requirement is to present a plan for temporary shelter services by December 31st, 2019. So, well, Randy, we'll give you a copy of the agreement. It is what it is, and uh, we'll make sure you have it. Right. Uh, I hope as soon as possible because it is cold out there, and um, we're hungry, too, as far as the resources that we have here is very undereducated. They're not doing nothing but closing more of their resources to us. Mm -hmm. okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. We're doing our best already, okay? We are so, doing our best. Within how long you say? Our plan has to be completed by December 31st, 2019. That's for an overnight shelter. For a temporary service overnight shelter. Here? In the city of Bellflower, okay? For our own only, not other cities? It's in the agree the agreement is struck. It'll be as indicated in the in the settlement agreement with the county, and we'll get you a copy of it so you can read it. Okay, I've already explained what happened to me when I went to two of the shelters. I'm not lying about that. So we don't want those kind of crimes here. You know, all the great work you're doing here doesn't need to be ruined, okay. and we we do need your help. We really okay. do. Why don't you walk around and meet them? Hey, how you doing? Don't, don't, 
truth applies to everyone equally. It's up to us to either listen to it or use it in our life in a direction that helps. Or watch them die. You sleep. How can you sleep wondering your own citizens, your own, your own city? This is you. You're our president. We need you. All right, thank you. I'll, I'll see you next time. All right, thank you. All right, we're going to go back to item, uh, moving on to item 12A, Mr. Stewart. This is a consideration of possible action to one, read by title only, waive further reading and introduce ordinance number 1381, an ordinance adopting the 2019 editions of the California Building Code, the California Residential Code, the California Electrical Code, the California Mechanical Code, the California Plumbing Code, the California Energy Code, the California Fire Code, the California Existing Building Code, the California Green Building Standards Code, the California Reference Standards Code, and the California Standards Administrative Code, making certain amendments based on local conditions and amending the Belfire Municipal Code to reflect such changes, and two, setting a public hearing for November 25th, 2019 for the second reading and adoption of the ordinance, and I believe Mr. Patterson's here to make a staff report to the council. I'll just do the introduction for it. So good evening, Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council. Every three years, the California Building Code Standards is updated. The 2019 CBC edition takes effect January 1st, 2020. The proposed amendments to the Bellflower Municipal Code relate to building code regulations for the purposes of complying with state requirements and to update current administrative and technical standards. California law requires that the City Council conduct a public hearing before the second reading of ordinances that adopt the CBC, and staff recommends the City Council set a public hearing for the second reading of the ordinance at its November 25th, 2019 meeting. That concludes my very short presentation. I am happy to answer any questions. <clears throat> Steve Patterson, the City's building official, is also here to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, isn't Mr. Patterson making a, making a presentation tonight? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for I was looking forward to that because when you sat there, this is the first time in my in my city life that you sat there. Usually <laughs> up there, okay. So I thought that you're going to be making a uh, a huge presentation tonight. <laughs> if if there's. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> If there's no further questions, I could make a motion. <laughs> Go ahead, uh, Council Member Dunn. Okay. <laughs> since, since there's no presentation from Mr. Patterson. You owe me. <laughs> <laughs> Saved your butt. <laughs> yeah, we'd be here to wee hours reading about code. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I'd like to uh, waive further reading and introduce ordinance number 1381. And also set a public hearing date for uh, for a possible uh, November 25th, 19 City Council meeting for the second reading, and a possible adoption of the ordinance. Second. Motion by Council Member Dutton, seconded by Council Member Coops to um, introduce introduce Ordinance 1381 and set a uh, public hearing date for November 25th, 2019. I got well, I got a question to the uh, City Clerk. Okay. I get. Did this, did this include the fire code in here, in this ordinance? I want to make sure. Yeah, it's in somewhere it's in the there. middle there. Okay, it is okay. Yeah, that's my, that's yeah. my, that's my. Yeah. All right, before we take a vote, uh, are you going to be making a presentation on November 25th? Okay, there you go. Okay. I'd like to hear you make a presentation, uh, a special request from the mayor. There you go, okay. All right, vote call please. <laughs> Councilmember Hamada? Aye. Councilmember Coops? Aye. Councilmember Dutton? Aye. Mayor Santanez? Aye. All right, thank you. We're, we set the stage for thank the you, next- Thank you, code, uh, code man. Yeah, go home code and study. Yeah. Yeah. Go home, code three. Yeah. <laughs> and make sure you're ready with the PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> yeah. Throwing on the gauntlet again. All right. <laughs> Item 13A, Mr. Stewart. 
This is consideration of possible action to provide staff direction regarding rate reduction for agreement number 214.4 with the YMCA for Greater Long Beach Los, Los Ritos branch for a co-sponsored swim lesson program at the Bellfire Aquatic Center. And Mr. Milano, who's worked long and hard on this, has a brief staff report for you. Mayor, before that, I need to recuse myself from this item due to um, financially work on their, their vans at times, source of income. Okay, let the record reflect that uh, Council Member Dundon is recusing himself on item 13A. Mr. Milana. Yes, thank you. Good evening, Mayor and members of the Council. Uh, this evening, staff is one, providing a financial update of the YMCA swim lesson agreement. Uh, and two, uh, staff is seeking direction from the City Council for a potential rate reduction in the agreement uh, that the city has with the YMCA for um, the offering of swim lessons at the Aquatic Center. Uh, a, a brief financial summary, uh, in 2013, we started this uh, agreement and the new framework um, that we began. The city revenue grew for the first four years. Um, however, the revenue and participation numbers have declined for the last two years. Uh, average revenue to the city uh, since we began this agreement in 2013 has been $39,000 per year. The YMCA currently pays 25% 20, of their fees collected to the city, and the current agreement goes through 2022. Our recommendation to City Council, staff's recommendation, is that the City Council, if they do want, wish to consider a rate reduction, uh, that it be somewhere uh, around 5 to 10 percent in favor of the YMCA's percentage. Um, and also, we would cons uh, have the City Council consider a rate adjustment, um, that a rate adjustment trigger. Right now, there's a trigger in the agreement that if they have over 6,000 participants, um, anyone over and above those 6,000 participants um, would pay a higher percentage to the city. However, we've never come anywhere close to mm -hmm. that. Uh, so our recommendation would be if you do choose to lower the rate reduction, uh, that you lower that trigger mechanism to 3,250, uh, which they haven't come close to the past two years, but would get us back up to where they were. Once they got to that trigger, then uh, staff is recommending that we would go back to the percentage we're at mm -hmm. if you choose to make that okay. uh, rate reduction. If, uh, if the city council chooses to make a rate, rate reduction this evening, um, staff is asking that you let us know the desired terms and then we will we'll work with the city attorney to um, make an amendment to the current agreement. Um, and alternatively discuss and take other action related to this item uh, if needed. All right, thank you Mr. Milana for that, uh, for your report. And um, just, just for full disclosure, uh, Council Member um, Hamara and I are board members of the YMCA, but we have no um, f financial interest with the YMCA, so we don't, have, we don't have conflict, so we can participate in the discussion. I, I brought this issue up because um, being a board member of the YMCA, uh, we get um, semi um, um, bi monthly reports, and um, one of the things that I noticed was the uh, the attendance in terms of swimming lesson has been going down, as illustrated in this chart. If you go back here from let's say in 2000, 2013, it was 33,000, uh, went up to 47,000 in 2016, and then it's been going down 2017, 40,000, 2018, 35,000, and some change. And uh, this year, um, although the, um, the indoor pool was closed at some point in time, uh, but we only uh, reported revenue from the YMCA was less than $10,000 for, uh, for six months of the year. So it's been, so it's been trending down. So m my concern was if this trend continues, my, uh, I'm, I'm afraid I'm concerned that um, YMCA may basically just kind of fold for the, for the operations, especially now since they, uh, they're now administering, running the uh, swimming pool at Para City of Paramount. And uh, I spoke with the um, City of Paramount, their director of, pub of, of um, Parks and Recreation, and tried to find out what kind of arrangement they have with the YMCA. 
And basically, the arrangement is similar to what we had prior to the recession uh, way back before 2013 when we initiated this, um, this change in the agreement. And I, I fully understand why we got into this agreement to get some money from the YMCA, uh, because that was um, necessary. Uh, it was the sign of the times. We were cutting back uh, our services in the city. We were cutting back on uh, employees. Employees went into furlough and things like that. So, uh, the city is in a very different financial situation than where it is now. Uh, secondly, with the, um, the trend going down, one of my concern, uh, another concern on my part also is with the minimum wage going up again in 2020, 21, 22, uh, each year by $1, I'm concerned that um, they might cut back on their service uh, if it's not going to be make up uh, financial sense for them. And um, my biggest concern is if they, what happens if they withdraw from the city of Bellflower? Uh, to me, it's more of, it's, it boils down to public safety. It boils down to teaching our children how to swim. And uh, I, I can just relate to that. Uh, um, I, I grew up in a uh, rural community. I know how to swim in the river, but not scientific. And I, looking back, uh, in terms of my courage when I was young, uh, I'm glad that I didn't drown because I, I didn't know how to swim the scientific way. I did, I did learn how to swim through the YMCA in the Philippines when I was in college already. Uh, so can you imagine if I, I was so, I was so um, uh, adventurous when I was a kid and uh, you know, swimming down the river, there's no, uh, you're gonna flow, go with the flow, but sometimes there's a risk also. And so my concern is uh, if they pull out, what's going to happen to our, our children in the city of Bellflower uh, not being able to take swimming lessons? Because to me, uh, one, one, uh, one, one life's loss, I think, is very critical. Uh, so with that in mind, um, I asked staff to do some kind of analysis uh, to see what we can do to, to, to help um, the YMCA so that they can continue uh, their program because the swim the swimming lesson is a very critical program as far as I'm concerned in terms of I mean public safety and you know ch uh, children's safety uh, what they learn uh, I, I read a study that um, one city did a um, uh, they did a um, conduct swim lessons for all the second graders in the city and it, it, it was phenomenal uh, as far as the outcome of that study so um, so I, I would like them, with, with the concurrence of my fellow council members, I'd like to give um, some kind of um, assistance uh, or a break to the YMCA, um, one to so that they can be assisted in continuing their program and not be saddled with this additional increase in their minimum wage come next year, the next the next three years actually, because one dollar increase in the minimum wage can make or break in terms of how many. How many swim teachers can be can that the YMCA can afford? So, anyway, so those are my thoughts. So I'd like to kind of pursue mm -hmm. that um, with with my fellow council members. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, as mentioned, yes, I'm on the uh, again board of managers for the Los Cerritos YMCA. Uh, again, proud to be a part of uh, that organization. They, they do a lot of great things for the kids, and uh, swimming, yes, is one of those critical services that. That uh, that's you know provided to this community and uh, and and that equates to saving lives as as the mayor mentioned and and uh, and I think back to uh, again that's where I learned to swim back when it was called Cogran Park so uh, and uh, and jumping off the high dive uh, and uh, but uh, um, uh, yeah well I can think of a few times when I got caught in riptides you know so so. That knowledge that that's going to help. So, uh, but uh, uh, and uh, you know again we're we've been thankful to the Y uh, uh, that they're trained and they're staffed and they can provide something that's that's uh, you know cost beneficial for for this community. Uh, and yes, I agree. I I don't want to see it ending swim lessons here here in Belfar uh, and having their kids go out out elsewhere. Uh, PJ, um, five to ten percent. What does that equate dollar-wise, just on the average, kind of? Right now, uh, we are averaging about sixteen dollars um, per.
per participant registrant. The city is. Um, that, that's how what we're averaging per participant. Uh, I think if, if we go, if we were to adjust it 5%, it's going to average about 10, which is where we started. Uh, it, it would average about 10 per participant. But that, th there's so many variables here because yeah, the, yeah. the rates, the fees have risen by the YMCA as, um, minimum wage has risen as well. Not a lot, but two to $3 per participant. So there's, there's a lot of variables, but you're looking at about $5 per 5% per mm -hmm. participant. Okay. So with the average uh, usage, uh, let's say what, 2,500 uh, 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 learners a, a year. So we're still talking less than 15 grand is that just ballpark <laughs> you're looking at about with 2500 participants you're looking at about $25,000 oh, $25, to the city so, okay. so that would that would be the max 10% that's the, oh, we're looking we're yeah. seeking your direction yeah. on this this was just uh, staff's recommendation through. to stay within the framework of where we started the agreement mm -hmm. where we're at now um, making those adjustments where we th thought it would be best uh, feasible for, yeah. for all parties involved and, and moving forward. But we are looking for your direction yeah. at, the city, at the city council level. All right. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Mr. Coops. PJ, with all the enhancements we've made on the swimming pool and we're going to dedicate it this week, are we able to, even though we've got some great capital costs and trying to get this thing back to where we want it to be. Is that pool going to be offered at a lesser price to operate with the solar and stuff? Do we, am I barking up the wrong tree? Do uh, we have the same expense on that pool that we had before? I believe we're going to have around the same expense. Public Works will be able to tell you further. But what, what I will say with aquatics, and we're it's never going to end. No, the, ex I get the, the expenses are going to be mm -hmm. there with that pool. Currently, yes, we have a ribbon cutting tomorrow, but we're dealing with a 60, 70 year old pool. So we're already dealing with some plumbing issues underneath that main pool right now. So it's, th those costs are always going to be there. And I don't, I, I don't think the intent on, on city council level when we went into this uh, agreement was to cover the cost fully. Mm -hmm. It was to make it more equitable, right. um, and, and I think we, we achieved that. Um, but minimum wage, definitely, we, we understand that, because we understand that uh, as the city in our Parks and Recreation Department, too, because it's hitting us hard, and uh, we're having to reduce the number of staff out there in general. So we understand that, and, and with those increases, the one of the big unintended co uh, consequences is the raising of fees to cover all the costs. So we're never going to cover those. No matter how much we charge them, we're not going to cover those no, costs. I, and I get if, that, but I wondered whether or not this new improved pool offered some economies of scale. I remember when we had ladies in here that were complaining about the two degrees that we lowered the temperature, and I think the gas bill was eighty thousand a year. Do you remember that figure? Uh, I don't have that number off the top of my but head, but I mean, yes, it was high. It was high, it was high. And, and I believe that has been re reduced. Now, if that's gone down less than 80, um, I'd like to hear it. Uh, and I'm not to say that I'm not thinking what we're doing here, but I wondered whether or not this new improved, uh, the solar on the roof, um, the gas, ex we've got some more efficient pumps. Maybe I'm barking up the wrong tree here, but I'm wondering if we're going to operate. And I get what you're saying. We're always going to have things fail. We're always going to have increases in wages. Those are all going to be there. But I wondered if when uh, Sonny and I, well, we were set on the committee to create a more efficient mm -hmm. lighting, and we're paying for that debt with our lesser electric bill. Your savings, yeah, exactly. And, uh, I'm trying to use the same mm -hmm. model here a little bit to soften the blow. Mm -hmm. You understand my... Yes, oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Um, and maybe I'm... And they said, no, Dan, we just got a really nice, nice pool here, but the expense to keep it heated and lighted is just as more, if not as it was. You know, I, I'm just speculating. But I do agree with what has been suggested here. Um, Parks and Rec, as you've explained to me, is always a, uh, an expense. It's not an income producer. It's just a matter of how much money do you allocate to this to provide our citizens 
the best quality of life in our parks and records recreation uh, opportunities. And uh, years ago, the city was in the business of in the swim uh, lesson business, and we allocated that to the Y. And I think overall, it's been a great program. Although we've had some hiccups now as to attendance, and I guess that's another question. You you are on the board. As we look at the population of those in the Y programs, has that diminished as well? Do you have just as many kids participating in the Y, Las Cerritas Y, as you had before? And, uh, you know, it's a little askew on this past year because we didn't have a fully operational facility. But do, are you serving as many children as you did in the past? It's kind of it's kind of uh, we cannot compare apples to apples because they changed the 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 focus. Uh, at some point in time, the okay. the focus was healthy lifestyle. Okay. And then now the focus is more on on child care. All right. That's the main focus. Right. And so you've got really little kids there that may not be participating in the swimming program. Right. Exactly. All right. I get it. Yeah. But you understand what I'm going. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Uh, to see mm -hmm. whether or not your business uh, model obviously has changed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if are the numbers. Are we ever going to get back to the numbers that were achieved five years ago? But if you change the programs, probably not. No. You know? It, well, if we don't just change the program, most likely the enrollment is going to go down further, I think. Uh, because they, if, you, if, you, if we don't give them some kind of a break, um, one option they, they can do is they can increase the rate. Right. The now, challenge with the challenge with that is, if they increase their rate, then they're going to be priced out. No, eventually. and I get that, and that's and not my we, intent here. Again, the, <laughs> our neighboring city, the so, rate is much lower than ours now. So when a kid is learning to swim in a bell in a Paramount pool, mm -hmm. those are Belfar children that are being taken over they, there to they be could done be. that. They could be. It, so it's their choice. So is that an option that you can choose where you want to be trained? Oh yeah, yeah. Because um, mm -hmm. you can pay, you can pay. If you are not a resident of the city where the YMZ operates, you you pay a a different. You get a, a fee. Yeah, discount. So there's a there's a premium yeah. to that. So if I'm a Belfar resident, I swim in Paramount. I may be charged a higher rate. All right. So it's not to, attractive to go to Paramount. Well, it 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 is because their rate overall is lower than Belfar. So I can I can swim cheaper in Paramount than I can in Belfar. Yes. Even if I don't live in Paramount, mm -hmm. well, that's disconcerting, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. And again, that's why I emphasize my concern is if the minimum wage, the additional minimum wage, kicks again in Jul in January, right? Then they have to increase the the rate again. No, and I know that you know we're not talking masses amount of money no, here. No, it's not. No. no. I mean, I, I think the public will say, well, you know. Dan, you're looking at $25,000 and you don't think it's a lot of money. It is a lot of money, but in the whole scheme of a $40 million budget, we need to be prudent mm -hmm. as to how we allocate these things and what the usefulness of this program that it serves our citizens. Right, exactly. And exactly. I don't think that it, it behooves, it makes us look good when Belfar people are going to Paramount to swim because it's a better deal. Mm -hmm. That doesn't reflect well on us. Yep. You know? Is this a profit center for the Y or not? Or do they just break even? Break even? Yeah. They okay. don't. Yeah. Because there was a point in time that I think they made money on it. Maybe that predates when uh, you were on the board. Did they? Yes, the, on this particular program, and that's that's where this agreement it became more equitable. Mm. It, it, it was the overall um, services of YMCA, probably not, but this particular program was a profit center. It was center. a profit center and, for and the Y. And they would consider that a profit center, Because yes. there were more kids participating back then when they were making Possibly. money. Possibly. Okay, most likely. Anyway, I just yeah. wanted to try to air out what I didn't know about how the children's numbers were currently mm -hmm. as opposed to what they were. And I can certainly see where that 6,000 uh, number was totally inappropriate at this point in time, and the 3,250 is much more appropriate. Yeah, and I think that's a win-win. If we get back up to that numbers, then our, our yeah, it triggers us. we got to carrot out there for them to increase their numbers. Right. And I don't know. They probably didn't have promoted it much because they didn't have a place to go to swim anyway. Cor correct. And so over the past year, they haven't offered as much because uh, enrollment was, was slowing down plus the construction going on. So they didn't offer as many opportunities for classes as, as, as well. So there's a lot of different factors in it, no. but uh, and we understand them all. And my attitude towards these public facilities, use them what they're meant for yeah. and wear them out. That's what they're meant for. 
I mean, they're not there to keep as a pristine example of great architecture. <laughs> they're there to be used, right? Those are the museums. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, that's all I have. Yeah. So anyway, going back to um, direction from, from city council, what, I, what I'm contemplating is uh, it would reduce the rate by 5% over the next three years. This one so, so for the remainder, for of, the this, remainder. of this current agreement. Yeah. And after that, we'll see what happens for the remaining. If, so if we reduce it by 5%, let's say, so it goes down to 20% in 20. Janu it'll, January 1, it'll go right, down. January 1. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, 15% in 2021, and then 2022 becomes 10%. Then at the end of the contract, the agreement, then we'll just review that if we still, the 10% is still warranted. Okay. Okay. At least so the why we'll be able to figure out what it is that their new rate right. schedule would be. Exactly. So at least it will kind mm -hmm. of compensate part of the, the increase in the minimum wage in the next, the next three years to kind of help them out. But um, I just, I was just kind of thinking when I was, Talking about the uh, the um, the rates for um, non-resident, uh, what I'd like to to see is we get that premium, hundred percent. So, for example, the premium on the non-resident fee. I don't think the YMCA should take any of that. So let's say let's say the regular fee is ten dollars and the uh, non-resident is twelve dollars. I'd like the city to get the two dollars. You want the city to get that? Yeah, the uh, the premium. The non-resident premium. No, there's there's a difference between non-resident and resident. Mm -hmm. All I know that. Does anybody? Uh, yes, there up? are two fees, but and, and I think we already have language in there, uh, specific to the percentage. How do they prove they're a resident or not? ID. ID. I will look into that. So what you're recommending is we get the, we get 20 percent of everything, including the if they have an additional five percent for a non-resident, we get 20 percent of that as well. No, we get the whole thing. We get the whole premium, the premium, the non the non-resident premium. Yeah, whatever the difference is between resident and non-resident, I want the non-resident premium because for them, teaching a non-resident resident should be the same. It shouldn't matter. Yeah, it's the same lesson. Right. Yeah. But for us, I think at least we should get the money for the non-resident. And I don't think you're premium. talking gobs of money No. Here. But since we're giving a break anyway, okay. we'll get something well, back. Well, you put it in one pocket and take it out of the other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. If you can look into that. Okay. Okay, that will be my, my proposal. It, uh, we, we, we've, got a good oh, no. we've got a good system down with, with yeah. Jeremy and the wife. They have a form down, and, and we'll... Right, let me just look at these numbers, and then we'll we'll start. And as it, with regard to the trigger, um, do, do you want to move down to the three thousand two hundred fifty yeah, trigger? Yeah, three fifty is fine. Okay, yeah. I'm okay with that. Are you okay with that? I'm with, yeah. yeah. Okay. Six thousand is not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll need a motion from, from the dais. All right, so I, I will uh, make a motion uh, to provide staff direction regarding rate reduction from agreement file number two one four point four with the YMCA of Greater Long Beach, Las Rita's Branch, for a co-sponsored swim lesson program at the Belfar Aquatic Center. Uh, as that by, includes As the amended with the uh, 3250 as opposed to six, mm -hmm. with a $2 collection on yeah. non-residents. And the whatever, the whatever the premium is. Right. Yeah. And the 5%. And the 5% reduction every, uh, reduction. for the next three years. Okay. Is that clear enough? Is that covered? Yes. Okay, motion by uh, Council Member Coop, seconded by Council Member Hamada. I'll second that. And yeah, I, I, again, I was looking more of a, at a phase type of uh, favor to the Y, so mm -hmm. glad you brought that up. Okay, because again, my, my concern is the next three years where the minimum wage is yeah. going to kick it again. So well, we can reevaluate this if we think it's not going right. Right, and at the end of the term, which is three years to go, then. What I'd recommend is just leave it run until the budget, and then we'll take a budget time and examine it then. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, is the motion clear, Miss um, City Clerk? Got it. Okay, roll call, please. Councilmember Hamada. Aye. Councilmember Coops. Aye. Mayor Sanchez. Aye. All right. Uh, consent calendar. Oh. Let the record reflect that Councilmember Danton is rejoining the City Council meeting.
Welcome back, Ray. Well, thank you. You guys All have right. fun while I was gone? Yes. Oh, yeah. All right. Anyone who would like to <laughs> recuse or pull any item on the consent calendar? Move the consent calendar. Mm. Second. A uh, motion by Council Member Coop, seconded by Council Member Hamada to approve the consent calendar. A small, oh, with, oh, with the, the correction. Minutes, yes. That's corrected yes, on the minutes. Correction to the minutes. What item is that item? That was, what is this? 14E. Item 14A, right? Oh, e, oh, like 14 Edward. E, 14 e. okay. Uh, my motion stands with the correction, 14E minutes. Second also. Yeah. All right. Uh, roll call, please. Councilmember Hamada? Aye. Councilmember Coops? Aye. Councilmember Dutton? Aye. Mayor Santinez? Aye. All right, council reports. Uh, Councilmember Hamada? Oh. Let's see. Um, since the last uh, council meeting, I, I, I did have a chance to, uh, to attend the League of California Cities down in Long Beach, um, uh, participated in, uh, in the LA Division uh, meeting. Uh, run by the mayor pro tem as president of the la division also uh, now a member of of the asian pacific islanders caucus uh, for the league uh, and um, since then we also did get to see the uh, art the, the art show and um, uh, last week i um, i uh, went to the contract cities board meeting and uh, uh, got to see Signal Hill's new library. And it, mm. it, it's impressive. A lot of neat things they've uh, themed for the uh, library and uh, um, uh, quite a bit of investment. And uh, uh, they're able to work with the contours out there. And uh, it's, it's a really nice venue with, a, with an outdoor patio. And that's where we got to eat dinner. So mm -hmm. uh, nice setup, very nice setup. So if you have time to take a look at that, uh, it's, a, it's a neat library. Um, and um, last week also uh, went to the, um, uh, and, and the mayor pro tem was there also, uh, and uh, last week uh, again went to the West Santa Ana Branch Metro Rail meeting at Sims. Mm -hmm. The mayor and the mayor pro tem were mm -hmm. there, and uh, this past Saturday um, had coffee with Jim, Jim, Jim the rock star, Jim the rock star <laughs> de la Longa, and uh, it was a standing only uh, at, at uh, Fancy Cakes, uh, Again, a lot of great dialogue bet uh, between the community and, and staff, and I had a chance to chime in. Uh, and uh, um, uh, it's 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 a great event, and I think it's I was telling Jim we may need a bigger venue to to to, to hold everybody. But uh, mm -hmm. again, uh, and uh, again, thank you, uh, Gabriel, over at Fancy Cakes, for being a nice host. And again, sta uh, uh, and Jim, Catherine, and then and, and also Anika. Uh, covered staff and uh, I think uh, we get a lot of questions and, and they were answered so I think everybody was uh, again looking forward to uh, uh, the new things and uh, then they were they were asking a lot of side questions on uh, on you know, some of the other things so great to have that and again thank you Jim thank you mr. mayor uh, thank you council member Hamada council member Coops uh, thank you council member Dutton I have nothing tonight, Mayor. Oh, my goodness. All right. I guess I have to make it up. For, uh, <laughs> uh, on, uh, yeah, <laughs> come on. <laughs> on October 21st, um, I attended the, um, the, the um, meeting of the uh, Community Economic and uh, Housing Development Committee of the Southern California Association of Governments, where we approved the uh, regional housing as, uh, needs assessment methodology. As I reported in a meeting or two ago, um, the City Council authorized me to vote for um, um, option three. Unfortunately, um, all those options um, lack, whatever word is, lack the legal uh, support. So there's something that is not uh, legal in all those options. So staff came up with option four. Uh, which basically <laughs> is still adopts most of the option three methodology where the main driving factor is local input. That was the key. So our, um, not looking at the numbers, our uh, allocation jumped from 200 and some chains to over, over a thousand. Okay, so that was, um, and we knew coming, coming, uh, going along that um, 
going in that uh, 200, 200 units over eight years is so tiny for bellflower. So I, I firmly believe that um, 1,000 is more realistic as compared to option one, which I think will require us to provide housing for 4,000 units and option two, about 5,000 units. So uh, option four is a, still a far cry much better than option one and two. And um, after so much deliberation during that meeting, uh, I'm happy to, to report that the, uh, the vote of the committee is unanimous. Uh, that, was, that was unprecedented. There was no opposition at all. I, I know that some cities are crying because of their allocation is, is much larger than ours, but um, I, I, I think cooler heads prevailed and logic basically was used to, to justify the adoption of, of option four. So the next step is for that um, uh, option four to be presented to the regional council, which is the governing body of the Southern California Association of Governments, and hopefully uh, it, it will be voted in and then presented to um, CHED, which is the housing development of, uh, branch of um, the, the state. About a thousand and some change, a thousand. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a win compared to two in option one Four and two. And five, yeah. well, Four thousand and five thousand. <laughs> that it, it is over eight years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we did our best. <laughs> yeah. Well, I get it, but I'm yeah. just trying to put this in perspective. But. Then go in for 200, it comes out with a thousand. It's, it's, it, it's not the, it's not the, it's not the num, it's not the numbers, it's the methodology that was approved. Does okay. That make me feel bad? Yes, you should. You should. <laughs> no, we spent, right. about, we spent about two hours on option one, two, and three. <laughs> and once they find out, oh my goodness, there's some legal weakness in those options. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Methodology, exactly. All right, moving along, uh, on October 24, I was honored to be invited to uh, speak before the students of Mayfair High School, the government class, thanks to Mrs. Anita McKay for inviting me. I was uh, very pleased to share my knowledge of local government, and uh, those, those kids are, are really sharp. They ask a lot of good questions. And on October 25th, I was uh, invited to attend a, um, a celebration of Larry Leong. He's uh, one of the... Uh, the icons of the, um, the labor movement in Delano, uh, together with Cesar Chavez, uh, way back a long time ago, and it was his birthday celebration, so he was honored uh, well, posthumously, and his son Johnny was the, uh, the keynote speaker. And, um, yes. And I don't want... Uh, well, it depends on your friends, Dan. <laughs> if you have good friends, then uh, you'll have birthday celebration. <coughs> anyway, uh, I just want to—I just want to uh, uh, piggyback to uh, what Councilmember Hamada mentioned about the uh, West Santa Ana branch, and uh, I want to thank our residents for coming to that meeting. And my my point, my uh, my message to the uh, to the uh, residents and all those who came to that meeting is, uh, please speak up now while it is under the design stage, because once it's built, uh, we cannot change it anymore in our lifetime. So the train is coming, but let's make sure that we continue to get engaged. If you have any issue, any concerns, any anything, any ideas, go to those meetings, share your ideas, because this is the time now to share those concepts, those ideas, anything you have in mind. Uh, and Because I want to emphasize, uh, it, once it's built, hopefully by, 20, by 2028, uh, I don't think they can rebuild it in our lifetime. So uh, this is once in a lifetime opportunity for us to shape and design uh, the, train, the train system from Artesia all the way to downtown Bellflower. Okay, before I join the meeting, I just want to remind you that um, November 11th is Monday. It's a holiday. That's usually our uh, first council meeting of, the, uh, of November. And before I adjourn the meeting, I just want to thank our veterans uh, for your service in our country. We salute you. We thank you for your service. And with that, uh, we'll adjourn the meeting, this meeting to the regular meeting of the Beltar City Council at 5.30 p.m. on Tuesday, November 12, 2019. So this meeting is adjourned.
Parsha, she's probably going to be an elderly gentleman. He's younger than you. No, he's kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but what's quite interesting.